start with the signing, Jack Andrew. Obviously, he come, comes over from your semi-affiliate, I suppose, yep. you call uh, Otago. So what, what did you like about him? Yeah, so look, uh, the signing of Jack Andrew, young New Zealand prospect, uh, kind of being a, like a hidden gem. Uh, so he's a strong athletic body. Uh, you look at our front line, uh, we've got a lot of veterans. Uh, and then uh, the thing that I like most is his athleticism. Uh, he's a point of difference with what we have on our roster. Uh, he's still a long ways away as far as where he can become in the game, but an exciting prospect nonetheless. You look at him and Kyle Zunick, Oli Hayes Brown, Corey Sherville have all gone through the same sort of system. Travis, yeah. a bit different sort yeah. of, from a deep hit perspective going through as well. But at, at, there's a pathway, it appears now, for players to go, we can legitimately make it by going through the system. A absolutely. And, uh, you know, when you look at our roster uh, at the top end, we got a lot of experience. But then uh, as those guys move on with their careers, you need uh, new stock ready to rock and roll. And I think uh, what the Wildcats have done and where we're trying to go with that is we want to find uh, untapped potential uh, within our own country in New Zealand and develop those guys while being around these great veteran leaders. You've got about what, eight days, isn't it? Yeah, next Friday night, you play your first one. You yeah. feel, what are you going to do for the next eight days now that you've got everyone back finally to prepare for that sort of game? Yeah, I guess coach speak, uh, you know, like we're finally all together so we can move forward. But we've been chipping away at it in different ways for over a month now. So we just want to keep building. Uh, it's going to be great to play some games so we really know where we're at. Uh, there is a little element where we're used to just playing against each other. Uh, so that'll it'll be just really great to play Adelaide and see where we're really at as a team. What did you take from the Burma stuff we had all your guys before? Yeah, uh, I think any time you get to represent your country, nothing but good comes about that. Uh, talk about Luke Travers. It was the first time he got to play in the green and gold at uh, international senior men's level. Uh, and you saw once again his versatility uh, with how he can impact the game was uh, dynamic. Uh, Mitch Norton, he hadn't got to play all off season, so him just to get up and down in a game situation uh, was really good for him. Because uh, there's a little, a lot of similarities in the style of play between the Boomers and some of the stuff we'll do. So it was good for him to get game conditions or reps in that. Uh, and then Blanchfield, uh, he come back into the Boomers in June. Uh, and he's just really enjoying the being back at that level. It feels like it's almost the way you the structure up that it's either Todd or Luke to start to, at the moment. Do you know how you want those two to be integrated into your, your life, how you play? Yeah, I've, I've proposed to the NBL if we can play seven or eight guys at a time and that'll make my life a little easier. But no, like, as I've said all the time, our versatility within our group will give us uh, the ability to play some different styles, some different lineups, uh, matchups. Um, and, you know, they're both su such different players within themselves. And there'll be times they'll both be on the floor together. Well, well how, how will you work out who gets the starting at those? Is it literally just form or will it, you look at matchups again? No, no uh, like I'm going to go in with our own philosophy and how we feel like the team is, is going to be. And then the, the thing that I look at it is whoever comes off the bench, we should be able to like take our play to another level. So are they competing in next couple weeks for that, that three spot or is it, um, how, how do you work out your five as a new coach? You, you look, you, you're competing every day. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're not competing, we can't have a good practice. Um, so as, as we go through that, uh, you know, figuring out combinations, who, who's good on the floor together. Uh, and really, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Pretty much every day, I'm putting different lineups together to see what I like, what I don't like, uh, because I, I, I want to concentrate on the stuff that I like more than the stuff that I don't. Because the more times I get that right, the better we'll be as a team. No, Sean out there today. Is he all good as you should? Yeah, he's, he's all good. No, no worries at all. He's, he's actually probably over the last week uh, re really taken his game to another level. I think his comfortability within the group, uh, what I'm expecting from him as a player, uh, I think there's a comfort level with all that now. Not every day we see Ricky Grace coming to training, especially with COVID the past couple of years. Yeah. How great was it to see someone like him in the building? Oh, look, anytime you get to have uh, club MVPs, NBL MVPs, uh, Wildcat legends, it's, it's great to have them at practice, just the, the uh, presence they bring. Uh, and as you said, like COVID restricted a lot of that. Uh, in my time as the head coach here, I want to make sure those former players and coaches are welcome around our program at any time.
funny. A couple of blokes sort of looked over and went, oh, that's Ricky Gray. So <laughs> you feel like it puts a different level of pressure on blokes to perform, don't they? They can see the legend sitting there watching them run around and they want to impress him. Yeah, well, he's a pretty good one to be impressing and be compared to like one of the NBL greats, let alone Wildcats. So uh, that's what I mean is when, when you bring former guys around, uh, it, it does bring a different edge to the group on that day. Yeah, Paul Rogers here as well the other day and again today. Has anyone actually spoken to, to the group yet? Or have they just been watching and fitting themselves in where they can? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, it would be nice if I could get those guys to speak to the group, but Paul's here. Uh, country week school school championship so he's trying to figure out how to get his own team a couple wins but it's great to see those guys here I like that he brings his team along so they can see uh, like what it takes to play at that level does it help you to feel a bit more part of the club as a new person when you have those sorts of blokes and integrating yourself with them and, and, and them with you yeah absolutely I think it brings a comfort level for everything um, you know you guys are talked about like the transition of the Wildcats uh, with ownership and the coaching changes and all of that. So uh, with more guys like that coming around the program and feeling welcome, um, you know, I, I, nothing bad can come of that. This one on the game, is everyone going to be right when you, when you head down south and stuff, two games in a couple of days, is the plan to find everybody or is there going to be anyone who's not going to be available at the moment? Oh, no, every, everyone's available and Craig, like that's eight days away. All yes. kinds of things can happen. But uh, no, look, uh, to be to be fair to the guys on the roster, you've got to give them an opportunity so they can show show me what they can do. So uh, we're playing five preseason games total. So uh, everyone will get an opportunity to perform.